There are a plethora of theories about how Meta collects your information, how Meta display ads to you, and the type of information it truly possesses about you. Furthermore, there are new features utilizing AI to enhance all of these processes. In today's video, I will cover everything regarding how Meta show ads. This aims to make you more aware of the ongoing processes whether you are an advertiser or a user of Facebook or Instagram. I will begin this video by showing you where on your own profile you can access all the information they have about you. Additionally, I will explain the detailed process they employ to collect your information and even the methods they use to gather your data without your knowledge. Following that, you will learn about the screening process they apply to all this information, which then allows them to present you with the exact Ad that leaves you wondering how they know so much about you. First things first, let me show you how Facebook tags you into some of its labels. Did you know that Meta has three types of detailed targeting? Demographics, interests and behaviors. Let me explain how each one of these works. Demographic targeting essentially involves most of the information you fill out on your profile or information you have provided publicly in other places, such as your job title, educational level, financial income, this one is not so accurate, life events, whether you have children, and your relationship status. As mentioned, most of this information can be provided when creating your profile. However, Meta claims, for instance, the income information is derived from publicly available data. Interest targeting isn't directly related to the information on your profile or provided elsewhere, but involves everything you do using the platform, such as pages you like, follow, or other interactions, including some engagements with your friends or followers. Examples of interests include business and entertainment. So, the behavior targeting encompasses everything you do on a platform, differing from interests, which include activities Meta assumes you are interested in, and demographics, which are all about the information provided across platforms and websites. Behaviors might include purchases made via Meta, anniversaries you might have celebrated, and digital activities like starting a new business page. To see what Meta assumes about you, you can go to settings and privacy settings, then click on account center to check every piece of information you provide, every behavior you have exhibited using Meta. You can explore the your information and permissions options by selecting access your information. You can navigate and review everything you have filled out throughout your Meta account. Clicking on activity of Meta Technologies lets you review information that businesses and organizations share with Meta about your interactions with them, such as visiting their apps or websites. By selecting Add Preferences, you can see your activities that led Meta to classify you into those interest audiences I mentioned earlier. Recent ad activity displays the interactions you have had with ads. Advertisers you have seen allows you to control the ads shown to you. Then, crucially, we have ad topics. Here you can view and manage topics, likely finding a plethora of topics like me. You can even filter them as you wish. It's noticeable that the classification is very broad and might not make much sense, given Meta's accuracy in targeting us, but from here it appears they have a very broad view of the user. The final option is Ad Settings, where you can review and adjust your ad preferences and learn how data influences the ads you see. The first option allows you to choose whether to share activity with ad partners. The second reveals how your profile information is used to categorize you. The third shows if an advertiser has included you in an audience based on your information or off Facebook activity. The fourth determines if your friends can see your social interactions alongside ads, which you can opt out of. The fifth lets you decide if you want Meta to show your ads in other apps. Before we dive into the information on how Meta shows ads, let's understand the information collection process. Have you ever wondered how Meta collects your information? In summary, it was via cookies and now it's using two methods, cookies and servers. 
A cookie is a small file of letters and numbers downloaded onto your computer when you visit a website. Cookies are used by many websites and can perform various tasks, such as remember your preferences, recording what you have put in your shopping basket, and counting the number of people viewing a website. This method allowed advertisers to track your information outside of Facebook. To do this, all they needed was to install a code called Pixel, now called Dataset, on their website to facilitate communication between the browser and Meta. This method worked quite well, especially as people began to express concern about how Meta knew their information so accurately, leading to optimized ad tracking but also general privacy concerns. Notably, with the rollout of iOS 14, Apple introduced a consent term for allowing cookies, significantly changing the game between 2020 and 2021. As you might have guessed, Advertisers lost their ability to track events outside Meta accurately, meaning less tracking on their websites. There were temporary solutions, such as running ads solely within Meta, where tracking was still fully possible. This platform strategy involved running ads to increase followers, then hosting lives on IG or FB to sell products. However, Meta and its development team introduced another tracking method, the Conversion API, which uses the website server to establish communication between Meta and the site. Initially relying on browser-generated cookies, they now depend on server information to create events that aid advertisers in track. Initially, this was somewhat bureaucratic, requiring domain setup and the creation of aggregate events for even tracking prioritization. However, this process has since been simplified. Meta now recommends installing the Pixel using both the traditional browser method and the new conversion API method, allowing for event duplication. But this is known as deduplication, and Meta has developed a way to identify this and count it as one event. With this new method, it's now possible to cross-reference information from cookies and servers. For example, one clothing brand tested two data tracking setups against each other, one using only the Pixel and the other combining the Pixel with the Conversions API. They discovered that the combination provided a 12% increase in attribution. We now have two methods for tracking events outside of Meta, and the new conversion API method offers additional features for tracking offline conversions and CRM conversions. Therefore, the monster they once tried to destroy has become bigger than before. Now, knowing all the information we provide our profile or on other websites and our actions on Facebook or Instagram are tracked by Meta, it's time to delve into what they can track but don't explicitly tell us. Let's start with the most common theory. Meta listens to our conversations through the cell phone, and I found a disturbing fact about that. The straightforward answer from Meta regarding the microphone theory is a no. <laughs> However, there is a claim stating that they can use it if we give them permission. So the remaining question is whether they use our audios even when we don't grant them permission. To clarify this, let me reference a study conducted by Wandera a mobile cybersecurity company, which aimed to test the phone snooping theory due to its customer constant worries about this issue. Wendera's experiment was straightforward. Place an iPhone and a Samsung Galaxy in a room, then play an audio loop of pet food ads for 30 minutes a day. Over three days, user permissions for a large number of apps were enabled, and the same experiment was conducted in a silent test room as a control. The experiment had two primary objectives. First, to scan a number of apps after the experiment to see if pet food ads appear in any streams. Second, to examine the devices for data consumption, battery use and background activity. The results might not surprise anyone. No pet food advertisements appeared in any app after the test. More tellingly, there was virtually no difference in data consumption, battery use and background activity between the tests in the audio room and the silent room. This outcome is significant because if an app were accessing a microphone and transmitting the audio to a cloud server for analysis, there would be noticeable data consumption. However, other studies have been conducted and here's what they found. In early 2017, a guy that I'll show the name here on the screen, 
a PhD student at Northeastern University in Allen Penn and undergraduate student design a study to explore whether phones listen to conversations without users knowledge. It quickly became apparent to the researchers that the phone's microphones were not being covertly activated, but other disconcerting activities were happening. No audio leaks at all. Not a single app activated the microphone, says Christo Wilson, a computer scientist on the project. Then we started seeing unexpected things. Apps were automatically taking screenshots and sending them to third parties. In one case, an app recorded a video of the screen activity and sent that to a third party. Out over 17,000 Android apps reviewed, more than 9,000 had the potential permission to take screenshots, with some actively doing so and sending them to third-party sources. This could be much worse than the camera taking pictures of the ceiling or the microphone recording pointless conversations, says David Chaffness. Another computer scientist on the project, there is no simple way to shut this privacy breach. So while your phone may not be listening to your conversations, it has the ability to track you in many other ways. This vast amount of trackable data is how companies like Facebook can serve you targeted ads that sometimes seem eerily accurate. Everything that makes your phone useful knowing your location, taking photos, enabling online shopping and banking. These are precisely where potential weaknesses and vulnerabilities lie, says Mike Camping, VP of Engineering at Wondera. The more useful your phone, the more attractive it is to advertisers, hackers or anyone wanting your data. Here the truth behind Facebook's occasionally unsetting targeted ads becomes much more disturbing than any microphone surveillance conspiracy theory. We have seen how to find information that Meta has from you, how they collect this information and also the ways that they collect information and don't tell you. Now it is time to understand how Meta decides to show ads to you by analyzing their algorithm. First of all, we have Meta's users on Facebook and Instagram and the advertisers who want to show their brand. Meta has millions of users to show the advertisers ads to throughout the ads. But how does Facebook decide who sees the ads? To answer this, we need to understand how the advertiser system maximizes its value for both people and businesses. First, you need to understand that at the same time Meta wants to deliver good results to the advertiser, they also want to provide a good user experience, especially because they are used by a lot of people primarily for that, the good experience. So the quality of your ads and how your ads impact the platform is crucial to keep things spinning for both sides. With that said, you need to know the advertisers need to make three important choices, which are first, the audience to use. The audience are created based on what the users are doing on the platform, such as liking content or pages, clicking on ads and the information they share in their profiles, like age, gender or profession. As I said earlier, the second factor is the business objective. Let's say you have two campaigns using the same funnel, the same ads and practically all the same thing but with the only difference of the ad objective. If one campaign is set up for purchases and another is set up for lead generation, you will see a drastic change in the cost of advertiser ads. You will notice the campaign using the sales objective will have a higher cost because even with the same budget, the campaign with the sales objective will show the ads to fewer people because they are more qualified people, since they tend to buy from you. That's why it's more expensive. The third factor is that advertisers place a bid which is the amount they are willing to pay for someone to see their ad to complete their ads objective. After the ad creation, it starts the review process. And then to show the ads to the right people, Meta starts to categorize them by their actions, which create all those detailed target options that you can see in the ads manager, such as demographics, interests and behaviors. Then it starts the auction process, where Meta decides the order of the ads to be shown to a certain person and in order to show the most relevant ad, the auction is based on each ad's total value, which includes the advertiser's bid, the estimated action rate and the ad quality. The advertiser's bid is related to what was chosen in the campaign objective and the estimated action rate represents how well the ad performs. Do all of that. 
Meta uses their machine learning that improves on their own to estimate how likely the person is to complete the ad objective. And this is based on many factors, including a person's activities on Facebook or Instagram, like engaging with content on the news feed or even offline activities, which is everything that happens outside Meta and the advertisers have decided to share with Meta, as well as related actions that other people might do by seeing the ad and even the time of the day they are doing it. Based on all these factors and the user interaction with the created content, the system can assign a high estimation rate for an ad. Meta also uses machine learning to determine the quality of the ad. To talk about this, we have three main columns in the Ads Manager that measure the quality of the ad. The first one is the quality ranking which is a ranking of your ad's perceived quality. Quality is measured using feedback on your ads and the post-click experience. Your ad is ranked against ads that compete for the same audience. This ranking reflects your ad relative performance in the ad auction for the date range you have selected. The feedback includes the number of times your ad was hidden and assessments of clickbait engagement bait and other negative experiences. Meta bases their estimates on the previous actions of the audience you are trying to reach and your ad's performance in the ad auction. Engagement rate ranking is a ranking of your ad's expected engagement rate. So engagement includes all clicks, likes, comments and shares. Your ad is ranked against ads that competed for the same audience. Conversion rate ranking, a ranking of your ad's expected conversion rate. Your ad is ranked against ads with your performance goal that competed for the same audience. For each of these three, you can receive the following ranks. Above average, average, below average, bottom 35%, below average, bottom 20%, and below average, bottom 10% of ads. A quality ranking of below average, bottom 20% of ads means that your ad's perceived quality was among the lowest 20% of ads competing for the same audience. At least, so the quality of the ad is based on feedback from people who have seen it and how well it meets all meta ads quality guidance. As more people interact with someone's ad and more visits are hit on the someone's website, better the machine learning starts to perform and make better predictions. That's why ads with the highest could not be the winner because other factors are being analyzed. As I said, the ad quality and how the ad can match with what the user wants to see. And the reason why they do that is to provide a better experience for both sides, advertiser and social media user. I believe that I have covered everything that shows how Meta uses their algorithm to place ads in front of you. I also believe this information will be helpful to advertisers and those who see the ads and wonder how they work. With that in mind, there is one last thing that could significantly impact how Meta uses information to show ads, the AI technology. Recently, we have started to see new AI features for creating texting ads, creating variation in images, and now even in selecting audiences, especially with the Advantage Plus audience. As ad managers, we have noticed that these new features are yielding better results. And now we are moving towards a future where we might only target broad audiences. This is because Meta already knows everything, and sometimes more than we think about our ideal client and our ideal segmentation. Broad targeting is essentially segmentation without those detailed targeting options I showed you earlier. No lookalike audiences and no warm audiences either. The only segmentation is by age, gender, and location. This broad segmentation has always been discussed as an option and in many cases tends to perform better with accounts that have more ad spend and pixel event information. With the new Advantage Plus audience, broad targeting has improved. Even when selecting detailed targeting, we now see that Meta recommends using selected targeting as a suggestion and expands that to other audiences. We are really with less control over the audiences to whom we can show the ads because Meta is relying on their technology rather than what we think is best for our audience. And as we saw earlier, their process for collecting information and showing ads is really complex. This could be the end of the media buyer job, as this facilitates the process of creating ads and the creators and companies could do it by themselves, or maybe not. Let me know here in the comments what you think, or if you know about it, and if you want me to cover that in detail in the next video. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and give a like to this video if you like this research I did.